music. Boy, Get me out of that. that. Well, wow. they should make that law fit. People would say, no, we saved it. And we worked and we made it. And we got the right to do it. With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero. Dearest, dearest, I whisper prettily under thee. Thou art solid murder, what a kick thou givest me. When I'm sentimental, dost thou dig my jive? I feel the lamp and gentle. Is it bad? Because a joke crash goes a thunderbolt Isn't that just like law? Straight is your path and firm is your step And then at the drop of a glove Where is south which is north bang It's July the 4th Isn't that just like law? Isn't it odd to walk up to a dream and say Don't I know you? Isn't it weird to hear miracles talk and say Well how do you Clear is your mind and strong is your will. A mountain is simpler to show. Then the ground falls apart. Boom goes your apple cart. Isn't that just like love? Colorado Springs, The Way It Was, is a program produced by the Pikes Peak Library District that looks back at the history of this region through old films. If you have an older film that features the history of this area you would like shown on Channel 17, please call 531-6333, extension 1170. In this episode of Colorado Springs The Way It Was, we feature two priceless films that promote the city of Colorado Springs and were produced by the Chamber of Commerce. The first film, produced in the early 50s and entitled Pikes Peak or Bust, promotes Colorado Springs as a tourist destination. The second film, entitled Time to Live, was produced in the early 1960s and promotes Colorado Springs as a space-age city of the future. These two films were graciously donated by local filmmaker Jim Bates from his personal collection. Jim Bates is a former World War II combat photographer and worked for the Alexander Film Company from 1934 to 1963. Colorado Springs The Way It Was is underwritten by the Alexander Film and Video Company of Colorado Springs, which has provided film to video transfers for this series. thousand feet above sea level, this famous mountain served as a beacon for westbound wagon trains more than a hundred years ago. And today, travelers from all over the world come to stay in one of the hundreds of attractive hotels and motels in Colorado Springs and vicinity, urged on by the slogan of the pioneers, Pike's Peak or Bust. <laughs> Colorado Springs is a glamorous little city from 65,000 people who are annual hosts to hundreds of thousands of visitors to this fabulous vacation land. A city of modern shops and a bustling business district. It is the home of Colorado College, the oldest liberal arts college west of the Mississippi River. It boasts a beautiful fine arts center that is outstanding. It is the site of the new Air Force Academy, the Continental Air Defense Command, and Fort Carson. It is a city of attractive homes and a hospitality that is traditionally warm and western. And Blessing and I sensed that hospitality as we drove through the city to our motel for a refreshing dip in the pool that first afternoon of our visit. <laughs>
In a majestic setting on the outskirts of Colorado Springs stands the Broadmoor, often all America's most known the world over for its luxurious hotel and recreational facilities, which of course include a spectacular golf course. And while I had wandered downtown to see the city, Blessing had chosen to go window shopping and sightseeing here. And where do you think she ended up? On Why is it a husband can never get his wife to try something like this while... That's it. Change your grip a little. Now, try again. What's this? The gallery going to try a shot? You know something? I know just how she felt. But it didn't take long to put Blessing back in a good mood again. When I joined her in the lobby of the Broadmoor, and we walked out on the lake terrace to the exquisite lagoon behind the hotel. Swimming, too, is a favorite sport at the Broadmoor, not only with the ducks, but also with the guests in the magnificent outdoor pool, heated year-round, as well as in an indoor pool for those who prefer it on snappy winter days. is but a small part of the landscaping of the hotel grounds, lying almost in the shadow of Pikes Peak, tight against the foot of Cheyenne Mountain, America's steepest rising mountain from a level plain. Up the face of this 9,300-foot peak, engineers accomplished the impossible and built a scenic highway to the top. And near the top, Spencer Penrose, who built the Broadmoor, also conceived the Shrine of the Sun and dedicated it as a memorial to his friend Will Rogers. It took two years to build this beautiful monument, and since 1937, silvery chimes have sounded from the tower for miles across the prairie below. As we walked around the lake, we spied the mountaineer sign of the miniature cog train which takes passengers up the mountain to the zoo. And of course, we had to include that in our sightseeing. It seemed like a good sample warm-up for the trip we were saving for the climax of our visit, the cog rail ride to the top of Pikes Peak. The Spencer Penrose Zoo is one of the finest privately supported zoological gardens in the world. Here in the most modern of cages and open-air pits are over 300 species of animals from every part of the world, such as the comical giraffe from Africa. The Wanako, or humpless camel from South America. And the dromedary camel, ship of the desert. Of course, the elephants are always a big attraction in any zoo. And this little fellow isn't really so big. He's a baby elephant. And here's a Barbary sheep from high in some far-off mountains. And the king of beasts. He seems a bit riled at the moment, 
trying to claw his way into the next cage to get at the lion there. Why? Well, we couldn't decide, but just a case of male jealousy, I'd say. Returning to the hotel for our car, we headed up South Cheyenne Canyon to see the famous Seven Falls. And here, from the top of the cliff, above us some 300 feet, a stream of crystal clear mountain water tumbles down seven swirling cascades to splash at the bottom into a pool stocked with huge rainbow trout. As the afternoon wore on, we turned back to town, choosing the high drive for an inspiring view of the valley, with the Broadmoor and Colorado Springs laid out beneath us like a tabletop miniature. And far in the distance, we could see the towering rocks of the Garden of the Gods, which we decided to visit next day as we headed down the mountain for dinner, a pleasant experience in this city dotted with many fine restaurants. quite knows exactly how the historic Garden of the Gods got its name. Quite possibly because it is the ancient worshiping grounds of the Ute Indians. Across the plains and down from the mountains they came to hold their ceremonies in this cathedral of nature. The Indians called it Old Redland, but we thought it perfectly named the Garden of the Gods. balanced rock like the toy of an ancient giant. Here a capricious nature has left in an area of nearly 400 acres a display of freakish formations of red sandstone which are splashed with many colors in the early morning light. Spires and minarets are all about you beside towering cliffs that rise straight from the valley floor. A fantasy land of natural beauty almost as famous as Pike's Peak, whose bulk towers over the garden, its slopes rising almost from the base of these colored cliffs. Not far from the Garden of the Gods, we turned into Phantom Cliff Canyon to the Manitou Cliff Dwellings. Here we found a collection of homes, forts, kivas, and so on, preserved as an outdoor museum, the buildings of a vanished prehistoric civilization. We went inside to inspect one of the buildings, and as we came out on the trail again, we were surprised to see Indians below us. And while we watched, they started a dance for the entertainment of the visitors. Little Deer and his son and grandson are Tiwa Indians who spend the summer at Manitou Cliff Dwelling, posing for pictures and doing their dances when visitors request. And what do you think Chief Little Deer's grandson is called? Big Eagle.
This is some of the most intricate footwork of all the Indian dances. This was the point I expected Big Eagle to go into Big War Dance. But Blessing came away with her scalp, and we drove on a short distance to Williams Canyon and the Cave of the Winds, of which we'd heard so much. How they ever built this road, I'll never guess and I put the Plymouth through the twists of the narrows, expecting to hear a crunch at any second, even though the sign was reassuring. Needless to say, traffic is one way. You wind along the canyon floor about a mile, then twist and turn up the side of the cliff till you reach the entrance house to the Cave of the Winds. The Cave of the Winds is one of those rare geological phenomena which are so fascinating to visit. Stretching back into the mountain for a mile, a series of rooms and passageways are decorated with fascinating growths of onyx, calcite, and alabaster. Stalagmites and stalactites look like giant icicles, but there is no ice here, for the temperature in the cave is always 53 degrees. Yes, here was a unique experience, deep underground beneath the Rockies. And next day we would reverse the trip and travel to the top of the nation to stand on the summit of Pikes Peak. More than 60 years ago, this old engine huffed and puffed its way up the cog railway to the top of Pikes Peak. Now it stands as a monument in the center of Manitou Springs and we passed it by with but a glance as we hurried on to the station to catch the early train up the mountain. The Cog Railway was built in 1890 and has become world famous as the highest in the world. Modern diesel engines have replaced the old steam locomotives with brand new cars with plastic domes and tops from which you get a beautiful view. Lee Jameson, the engineer on our train, has been on this run for more than 40 years. And as he eased forward on the throttle, we were off on the ride we had heard about and dreamed of taking all our lives. Like the pioneers of old, it was Pike's Peak or Bust for us. The conductor of the train was also our guide. And as we climbed steadily upward, he pointed out interesting sights and gave us the background of the famous Cog Railway. Colorado is often called the roof of the nation because it is the highest state in the Union with an overall average altitude of 6,700 feet. 52 of the highest mountains in the country are in Colorado. And though Pikes Peak is not quite the highest of all, by a few feet only, it is surely the most famous of all America's sky-brushing mountains. It rises 14,110 feet above sea level, a mile and a half above the plain at its foot. And when Lieutenant Zebulon Pike first discovered it 150 years ago and failed in his attempts to climb it, he wrote in his diary that the forbidding mountain would never be climbed by mortal man. Yet, only 14 years later, three men reached the top of the peak. 
And within a few more years, a party which included the wife of one of the members reached the top. And Mrs. Julia Holmes became the first woman to stand on the famous peak. What a difference today. Each year, more than a quarter of a million tourists climb the mountain, either driving over the marvelously engineered automobile highway to the top or on the cog railway. And as our train climbs steadily up and up toward the distant clouds, a changing panorama of awe-inspiring beauty passed our window. As we neared an elevation of 12,000 feet, we reached the timber line, that invisible mark drawn by nature above which no trees can grow. Small patches of open grass in alpine meadows and boulders heaped into piles here and there by some glacier millions of years ago lined the tracks. Now and then a marmot or a chipmunk darted into the rocks. In a few more minutes, we climbed the last sloping grade to the summit. And as our cog train came to a smooth stop, Blessing and I stepped off onto the roof of the world, more than 14,000 feet in the sky. With no more effort than boarding a corner bus back home, we had climbed the mountain Lieutenant Pike said man would never conquer. And how chagrined the good lieutenant would have been could he have seen these triplets beside the summit marker, three little fellows hardly old enough for school. Here we could almost reach out and touch the clouds. And as we looked across the distant mountains for a hundred miles or more, we too saw the purple mountain majesties which inspired Catherine Lee Bates to write the song loved by every American, America the Beautiful. The lookout tower was our goal, for we had chosen to come here on Labor Day to watch the famous Pikes Peak Hill Climb, the most grueling auto race in the country. Each year, the nation's top race drivers compete in a race against time up the twisting auto roads for a racetrack. thin and cold here on top of the country's most famous mountain. We hardly noticed the near freezing chill as we watched these speed demons skid their cars around the tortuous turns in their 12 and a half mile race to the clouds. miles an hour was the average of the winter this year. And as we stood on top of the mountain and watched, it was a double thrill to know that at last we too had finally realized the dream those early pioneers had expressed so simply on the canvas of their wagons, Pike's Peak or Bust.
This blaze of glory of brilliant fireworks welcomes each new year in the Pikes Peak region. Hello, this is Alex Dreyer watching a new year being ushered in in a part of America that is fast becoming famous for doing the usual thing in the unusual way. Sitting in an actual basin, protected from extremes of weather both by Pikes Peak itself and by a high ridge to the north. Colorado Springs and the surrounding area enjoy bright sunshine, sparkling days and moderate nights that have made the Pikes Peak Wonderland a mecca for tourists the year round. One of the first things visitors notice is the exuberance, the fresh liveliness of the natives of Colorado Springs. If they ask, the visitors find that most of the people who live and work in this happy progressive community came here originally as tourists or as military personnel assigned to duty here and returned as soon as they could to become permanent residents. Dr. and Mrs. Morton, for instance, having spent part of his military service at nearby Fort Carson, Dr. Morton decided that Colorado Springs would be his future home. So after his tour of duty, he brought his wife, Mary, and their daughter, Joanne, to Colorado Springs to begin a new life. First, they registered in at the world-famous Broadmoor Hotel. This was Mrs. Morton's and Joanne's first visit to Colorado Springs, and Joanne, being a snow bunny at heart, had expected to find the area knee-deep in snow in January. Instead, she found that though the nights were downright nippy, the days were sunny and warm, and snow, when it did fall, soon melted away under the balmy daytime sun. However, her disappointment was short-lived because the Broadmoor makes its own snow, makes and keeps a good deep bed of snow on Ski Broadmoor. Furthermore, ski enthusiasts, by a short drive, can reach the upper slopes of Pikes Peak, a world-famous Aspen, Winter Park, Breckenridge, Vale, and many other excellent winter-long ski areas. In addition, Ski Broadmoor is the only night-lighted ski slope in Colorado. The usual things, in unusual ways. While skiers on nearby Ski Broadmoor were thrilling to skiing at its best, Doc Morton was enjoying many rounds of golf, and Joanne and Mrs. Morton were swimming in the Broadmoor's heated outdoor pool open the year round or basking in the warm Colorado sun. Yes, in this enchanted region, there's no telling what wondrous things you might see. And wherever you look at any time of the year, there are spectacular scenic views to admire. even see movies being made. Another winter sport that Joanne was able to pursue was ice skating at the Olympic-sized Broadmoor World Arena. Here she met many young people, older people, couples and singles, all enjoying the exhilarating sport of skimming around the ice. The World Arena also offered many evenings entertainment with famous ice shows featuring the finest figure skaters in the world and with all the spectacle for which ice shows are renowned. Other evenings 
there were championship skating events. Joanne and her parents also saw spine-tingling ice hockey, as fast, furious, and frenzied as only ice hockey played by top college teams can be. At other times, the Morton family attended some of the superbly staged shows at the ultra-modern International Center. The excellent productions featured such name stars as Roger Williams, Nat King Cole, Harry Belafonte, Marlena Dietrich, Van Cliburn, and many others. Dr. Morton was further interested to learn that the International Center is rated one of the outstanding convention halls in the nation, and he made a note to contact organizations to which he belongs that they hold their conventions there. With all the activities offered by the region, they found the days just didn't have enough hours for all the fun available. Meanwhile, Dr. Morton was busy acquainting himself with the medical facilities and people in the area. He found fine hospitals, Penrose, Memorial, and St. Francis. Several excellent medical office buildings and a progressive research program. Dr. Morton was soon established with his colleagues, hung out his shingle in a fine office, and he and his family were settled in their new hometown, Colorado Springs. Here in Colorado, he found the future he had dreamed of and planned for. He found time to live. Here, too, Dr. Morton found new friendships with men who shared his own love of the outdoors, men such as Tom Harris, whom he met on one of his fishing trips in the nearby streams. Tom lives in Colorado Springs now, but it wasn't always so. And during one of those typically relaxing periods, at the close of a day of satisfying fishing, Tom told Doc how he and his family had come west to the Pikes Peak region. The Harrises had lived in a thriving community on the East Coast. Tom had been a highly skilled technician. Their home was paid for, their children happy in a good school, but Terry, their daughter, had chronic asthma, and they sought a cleaner, drier climate. Tom himself was a modern pioneer. He looked into many areas and felt that Colorado Springs fulfilled every requirement he and his family had. As a resort town, Colorado Springs offers many more things to see and do than any other area in the country. Upwards of two million people visit here yearly. But one of the things that pleased Tom Harris was the number and diversity of industries in the Colorado Springs area. The unusually high number of sunny, clear days and year-round moderate weather make the area unnatural for motion picture production. And Colorado Springs is home to one of the country's largest television and motion picture advertising producers. Electronic manufacture and assembly plants have found this area just the spot for their organizations, and several manufacture specialized electronic components. Electric motor assembly is another industry represented in the region, motors that are tailored for specialized uses in a wide variety of products. At one of the longest established businesses in Colorado Springs, visitors can see artists practice one of the oldest arts, throwing on the potter's wheel. This pottery uses clays of the area that, when fired, produce delicate coloring that cannot be duplicated by any others in the world. So Tom Harris found that opportunities for qualified people exist throughout the area. Tom told how he returned home to pick up his family and head west. The trip was a fun-filled adventure for the family, and as they traveled, they began to experience that sense of awareness of the unlimited spaciousness, of freedom and room to breathe. An encounter with some four-footed friends seemed to say, welcome friends, now you're really in the great wide west. Well, when they arrived in Colorado Springs, the family too fell in love with the city and the surrounding country. Tom first sought temporary quarters for his family and found his choice unlimited. Then the Harrises looked for a permanent home. They found they could get a good home, an attractive home, well within their means in virtually any part of the Pikes Peak region. The school system is one of the best in the country. There are excellent primary schools, junior high schools, high schools, plus private and parochial schools throughout the area. Programs reach far beyond just the schools, teaching faculties and progressive administration. 
The fire and police departments, for instance, maintain a constant program that is both educational and entertaining. Special demonstrations are given that teach safety, alertness, and proper procedure in emergencies. The Fine Arts Center offers cultural programs in all the arts, exhibits, plays, operas, films, dancing, sculpture and painting. You may choose the role of spectator or learn and participate. More and more Tom and his family grew to love everything about Colorado Springs. Soon the Harrises were comfortably settled in their new home. Tom back at a business he knows and likes. Young Tom is at Colorado College enjoying all the um, <laughs> educational advantages college life has to offer. Terry now knows asthma only as a word she sometimes has to spell in her classes at Palmer High School. Palmer High School is named after William Jackson Palmer, founder of Colorado Springs, famous Civil War general and pioneer of the famous Denver and Rio Grande Railroad. Palmer High School itself is a memorial to the far-sightedness of the city's founder. General Palmer left to his city the philosophy of time to live, a philosophy well illustrated by rodeo time. The Pikes Peak or Bust Rodeo is a nationally famous event. Rodeo time begins with a Western breakfast, served to several thousand on the main street of downtown Colorado Springs. The breakfast signals the beginning of a razzle-dazzle wing-ding that includes scenes right out of the Old West. Indian dances, another unrestrained Wild West hoopla. Breakfast Day finds the community bidding adios to the range riders, a group of Colorado Springs businessmen who each year spend a week riding completely around Pikes Peak. Then the rodeo parade, bright, noisy, with brilliant colors. Stirring bands, beautiful sleek horses, and all with a true western flavor. An exciting panoply, but all just a prelude to the rodeo itself. With both afternoon and evening performances, spectators enjoy all the thrills of rough and ready, real western ranch hand rodeo, plus thrilling show spectacles in Penrose Stadium. Yes, the rodeo is an event that residents don't and visitors should not miss. Norm Brownell, for instance, was a visitor when he saw his first rodeo. He's a regular now, since he too now calls Colorado Springs home. Norm is a golf bug with that intense love of the game that only other golf bugs can appreciate. President of an electronic component assembly business, Norm found his chances of getting in a few holes, few and far between, in his former hometown. And so, spent his vacations at known golfing resorts. It was such a golfing vacation that first brought Norm Brownell to Colorado Springs. And what a golfer's heaven he found it to be. The famous Broadmoor course, the new Kissing Camels course, Patty Jewett Municipal Course, and several others, all excellent and almost within sight of one another. Norm met men from all walks of life on the course and listened almost in disbelief as they insisted they golfed the year round. Norm recognized that the high dry climate and crystal clear air made it the ideal environment for his business and pleasure. An idea formed in his mind that very summer, the idea of establishing his industry in the Colorado Springs area. Later in the summer, Norm returned to Colorado Springs with his family. To acquaint them with the region, he started them on an exciting sightseeing tour, beginning with the Will Rogers Shrine of the Sun, a memorial to the great humorist. They saw scenic Seven Falls in a canyon described as the grandest mile of scenery in the Rocky Mountains. They took the thrilling ride up the Manitou Incline Railway saw real Indians doing Indian dances and heard the entrancing history of cliff dwellings. 
The children were delighted to find Santa Claus's North Pole Village, where tame animals wander freely, begging to be petted and fed, and where old Santa himself is in residence, waiting to greet and talk to his children. The village itself is of picturesque cottages, shops, displays that invite browsing. They took the unforgettable ride on the famous Pikes Peak Cog Railway to the very summit of Pikes Peak, 14,110 feet above sea level. Another exciting railroad ride was on the miniature train that took them to the Cheyenne Mountain Zoological Park, one of the cleanest and finest in the world. It is, in fact, rated among the top ten in the nation with the collection of over 700 specimens of birds, mammals, and reptiles. Another short trip was to the Royal Gorge, an awesome crevice that cleaves the mountains. Crossing the gorge is a suspension bridge, the highest in the world. The bed of the bridge soars dizzily into space, 1,100 feet above the roaring river and railroad that wind through the bottom of the gorge. They found that bordering Colorado Springs is a natural park named the Garden of the Gods. Here, with just a little imagination, you can see the kissing camels. Sir Harry Lauder, also known as the Scotchman, the famous balanced rock, and many other examples of nature sculpture. While Mrs. Brownell and the children were enjoying their holiday, Norm Brownell examined every facet of the industrial climate of the area. And the more he investigated, the more he saw why this area was considered a space-age, space-geared industrial community. He had studies made that verified that close humidity and temperature control are possible at low cost because of natural climatic conditions. Space availability is another prime consideration and Norm Brownell found that Colorado Springs, though nestled at the very foot of the Rocky Mountains, is built on and surrounded by level terrain. Colorado Springs' centralized location is yet another advantage. Two great highways intersect at Colorado Springs, offering fast highway service to or from any part of the country. Five railroads operate through the area and link it with the vast network of rail transportation that blankets the country. Many spur tracks exist, and others are being built to accommodate new and expanding industries. Several airlines service the area directly with connecting service to many more, giving two-hour service to the West Coast and three-hour service to the East Coast. Mr. Brownell found many freight handling and expediting services in the area, experts in proper packing in freight loading and traffic. Investigating the availability of fuel and power, Norm found present and future gas transmission and distribution programs designed to serve industrial and domestic customers with volumes of low-cost fuel. The natural gas, fuel, and electricity are supplied by the city's Department of Public Utilities. This modern system is designed to expand as needed to meet present and future demands. Water? Norm Brownell has found that thanks to modern engineering, Colorado Springs has developed water sources sufficient to meet the domestic and industrial requirements of the community. These developments are programmed to handle a metropolitan population of twice the present size. The watershed of Pikes Peak supplies some of it. Additional water comes from other modern developments. Satisfied with the tangible considerations of the area, Mr. Brownell looked into an intangible, the people. The productive capacity of the people of the Colorado Springs area is outstanding. Workers work harder, more enthusiastically, and deliver a full day's production for each day's pay. Time is one of the main reasons for this. Traffic moves swiftly and smoothly at all hours of the day. Residents arrive at their jobs only a few minutes after leaving home. Similarly, they work alertly right up to quitting time, knowing they'll have no nerve-wracking traffic to fight on the way home. And the healthful, exhilarating climate helps keep absenteeism at a minimum. Financing was the final important consideration. 
Norm recognized that the move he was contemplating would entail substantial expense, buying land, building construction costs, moving equipment and key personnel. He talked to the bankers of Colorado Springs and to other local financial experts. He found that financing for solid progressive industry was available from sources that recognized the potential of this space age, space conscious community and were willing to invest in its future. Room to expand, available. Building costs, in line. Shipping facilities, excellent. Power and fuel, okay. Working people, happy and productive. Brownell decided there was only one thing the area needed, his industry. So Norm Brownell began the steps that would bring another industry to Colorado Springs, where he knew he and his employees would enjoy time to live. Amidst a scenic grandeur that President Teddy Roosevelt once declared bankrupts the English language to describe, Norm Brownell soon developed that typical fiercely possessive pride of the people who live here. Now they too revel in showing to relatives and friends their country. They value the new friendships they have made here among people who share their enthusiasm for this way of living. Such a newfound friend is Professor Adams, whose vocation is teaching, but whose avocation is painting and collecting interesting history of this colorful area. The Brownells always feel that they are offering visitors something extra when they have an opportunity to have them meet the professor. Professor Adams, a teacher at Colorado College, is that rare breed, a native-born Colorado. The prop, as he is affectionately called by all who know him, delights in telling tales. Tales of the trek to the Pikes Peak region at the time of the gold rush. Tales as his father had told them to him of Indian attacks and other hardships suffered by pioneer settlers. Of those who didn't make it to Pikes Peak and of those who did. He knows entrancing stories of the progress of transportation from the early narrow-gauge railroad days, including the struggles for power of railroad giants for the right-of-way through unbelievably majestic Royal Gorge. Born when the Pikes Peak Gold Rush was at its height, the professor saw the gold-mining towns of Victor and Cripple Creek when they were lusty, brawling frontier towns. Here, Jack Dempsey worked as a mucker. Gallagher and Sheehan were streetcar men. Texas Guinan introduced her insolent greeting, Hello, sucker! Groucho Marx delivered meat and groceries. And Lowell Thomas spent a part of his boyhood earning money by knocking on miners' doors to awaken them in time to report for their shifts in the mines. The professor saw these towns prosper, then fade and almost die. Another example of continued progress near to the professor's heart is that of his beloved Colorado College. He has watched it grow from that little liberal arts college out west to its eminence today as one of the finest in the country. The prof has seen the man who guide the military might of our country choose this area for Fort Carson and for the site of the United States Air Force Academy. Encompassing almost 20,000 acres, the Air Force Academy is, in effect, a city in itself. That area abounds in superlative examples of advanced architecture and consists of the cadets' quarters, classrooms, gymnasiums, parade grounds, an observatory, auditorium, and the beautiful chapel. Two million visitors each year thrilled to watching the cream of American youth as they march in matchless precision in their daily formations. Only 
the best can qualify for admission to the academy, and only the best of the best graduate in the stirring ceremonies at the end of their four-year training and education. The Air Academy is a living testimonial to America's might, readiness, and progress. Another is Ent Air Base, which is headquarters for NORAD, the air defense center of the North American continent. The headquarters for this amazingly complex, fast reacting system is buried deep within the rocky fastness of Cheyenne Mountain. To Professor Adams, the selection of the Pikes Peak area for important military installations was the most logical selection that could have been made. He knows too that it's the logical choice for the site of many types of industry and business. The perfect place to live and play. Yes, perhaps better than anyone else, Professor Adams knows how much the Pikes Peak region offers. He has seen it grow from a sleepy little tourist town to a bustling vacationer's paradise the year round. Has seen it become an ideal convention site offering endless variety of accommodations, good food, as plain or fancy as appetite dictates, a choice of meeting spaces for groups large or small. And of all the traditions and history of the area, the professor has enjoyed most. Watching those who come here discover time to live and adopt the philosophy that there are no strangers in Colorado Springs, only friends you haven't met yet. This then is the story of four men, their families, their associates. These men, the thousands like them and all the people of the region, invite you to come to the Pikes Peak area. Come as a tourist guest for the greatest vacation you've ever spent. Come as a conventioner or as advanced man to find out about all the region offers for a successful convention. Come as a businessman to see what the area can do for your business, your industry. Talk to Colorado Springs businessmen, to the bankers, to the policemen, the service station attendants, to the people. You'll find they all share a zestful living a genuine warmth and friendliness because they have something they'd like to share with you. Time to work, time to play, time to rest. This is the place where there is time to live. Call that music? Boy, Get me out of that. Well, at least well. make that law stick. People would say, no, we saved it. And we it and we made it and we got the right to do it. With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero. Dearest, dearest, I whisper prettily under thee. Thou art solid murder, what a kick thou givest me. When I'm sentimental, dost thou dig my jive? I feel the lamp and gentle. Is it that my brother? Because the joke crash goes a thunderbolt. Is that just like love? Straight is your path, and firm is your step. And then at the drop of a glove, where is south, which is north, back is July the 4th. Is that just like love? Isn't it odd to walk up to a dream and say, don't I know you? Isn't it weird to hear miracles talk and say, well, how do you do? Clear is your mind and strong is your will. A mountain is simple to show. Then the ground falls apart, boom, goes your apple cart. Isn't that just like love? Colorado Springs The Way It Was is a program produced by the Pikes Peak Library District that looks back at the history of this region through old films. If you have an older film that features the history of this area you would like shown on Channel 17, please call 531-6333, extension 1170. Isn't that just like love, isn't it just